Hi, welcome to Promo Insiders, an ASI media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm Chris Ruvo for ASI. I recently attended Merchandise World, the United Kingdom's largest promo trade show. And if there was one major theme to the show, it was sustainability. Suppliers from across Europe exhibited. Seemingly every one of them had some sustainability story to tell about their products and or operations. As one supplier put it, sustainability is not a trend, it's a movement. There has been a growing focus on sustainability in promo North America, too. Still, it seemed like our European counterparts might be a bit further down the road on the movement, which got me thinking, is what's happening in Europe a foreshadowing of what's to come here, and what can we learn? Here to help with that and more is Nick Van Eg- Nick, help me with the last name, Nick Van Engelenburg, right? Van Engelenburg. All right, all right there we go. It's a That's very a Dutch topic. name. Yes, it's a proper Dutch uh, pronunciation. Um, Nick is a sales leader with Clipper. They're a Netherlands-based supplier that's doing some very interesting things with sustainability and everything from product materials to how they operate. So, Nick, thank you for being with us, and thank you for helping me with the name. (laughs) (laughs) Not a problem, Chris. Thank you for having me. All right, you got it. So um, for for everybody who is um, listening live, um, you can type uh, your questions in, please. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get to them if we can. Um, you know, comments are welcomed as well. Um, but without further ado, Nick, let's get into the first question. So um, how do you and Clipper define sustainability? Some, this word gets thrown around a lot, but what does it really mean to, to, to you and, and your company? Well, for me and the company, it would actually mean well exactly what it says. You want to produce items in a sustainable way, something that can... Uh, keep on going like in an infinite amount of times. You want to not produce only 1,000 of, of, of items. You want to be able to do the next thousand and, and millions after that. So uh, the promotional industry used to be somewhat cost-based and it would be cheap produced promotional items that would really use up all the resources that were there. If we kept going in this direction, uh, eventually all the resources would be, uh, would be gone. So we already took like uh, ahead of the curve by saying, no, we want to make actual sustainable items, which we can produce over and over again, and actually have zero footprint below the line. So you can actually uh, have uh, zero footprint or even negative footprint when you place, when when you buy promotional items from us. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a very interesting concept. And I, I I think one in like a, um, in, in, you know, in the consumer driven, if you will, Western world, that's, 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 that's different. It's a, it's a changing way of looking at the products and, and, and consumption and everything. And it seems like that's, that's something that's coming more to the fore. Um, you know, not just that clipper, but in, in, it seems in Europe in general. So, um, given what, how you've just defined sustainability is demand for sustainable items from, you know, your distributor clients and their clients in Europe, is is that growing? Is that part of what's propelling this? Yeah, it has definitely been growing. Like, um, of course, we, we need to make it e- economically sound as well. You cannot just uh, offer items from your the top of your mind because you feel this way. There also needs to be a demand, of course. Um, and there is, there's definitely a growing demand for sustainable items. Also because companies, they don't want to be associated with cheaply produced, um, yeah, not green items anymore because it really damages their reputation a lot of uh, a lot of people that uh, the product would end with end up with they would say okay um very nice that i got this item but you know actually giving it to me is actually bad for the environment bad for the world and they would it would depreciate the value and okay. the message that the, that the company would would try to to give it's interesting because um that perspective that you share, I, there's there's some of that certainly going on in uh, the U.S. slash you know Canada, but I uh, but when I was over in Europe talking with some people, that seems to be even more uh, prominent over there, where, where end users or recipients of of a promotional product are saying, I don't I, I don't even want this. This is just I'm going to throw this out. This is this is this is quote junk, you know. Yeah. But if you flip, you can flip that narrative, right? If you're providing them with a product that has this story. Of sustainability where it's made with quote unquote sustainable materials um yeah. where it has that that zero waste factor where it, it, it that then takes that negative perspective and completely turns it on its head so it sounds like some of that end recipient reaction is is what's driving the the, the push in europe to um to make these types of items yeah definitely like we really feel like uh th- there's a big change now it actually started in europe maybe a little bit before like it did in the, in the us and canada um 
we really we saw this this change in demand i've, I've done sales uh, at interrog group um for four years now and you really see the the percentage of of uh, requests for promotional sustainable items really grew from maybe 20 percent four years ago and now it's nearly all of the requests that we get is, is for sustainable items so right. really the, the it's the mindset as well from the from the distributors and from the end clients because distributors are also helping us pushing these this idea of course and that's and that's in, that you bring up an interesting point there too so um go I don't want to go too far afield, but how are you how are you helping distributors understand, you know, the you know, what makes your products or sustainable products in general different and how they can position that to end clients? Is there like an education factor that goes on too? There is definitely an education factor. Like we actually base our, our wow sustainable assortment in four different product groups. That would be waste materials, bio-based materials, uh, recycled materials, and and natural products, totally natural products. So that way you can have a little bit of uh, distinguishment between the, the the different products that we offer. And mm -hmm. we uh, we have a large marketing portal where you can find all catalogs and we just try to explain for each item uh, what uh, the sustainable element is for it. Like you can get a notebook um, without knowing that it's made from, for instance, recycled leather or, uh, mm -hmm. or coffee waste materials. Um, and then it just loses its value. It's the whole story behind it. It's the, mm -hmm. the production method and the whole sustainable element element that will sell the item eventually. Yeah. So people would need to know it. Yeah, it's a it's a great point. And again, it's 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 one that um, some of the conversations I had over there with distributors and suppliers they emphasize that over and over it, it was this hey there's a story to this product and as a distributor you're not just going there and saying hey this one looks nice this one looks nice this one's a little cheaper this one's a little bit more you're saying listen That's there's true. um yeah there, there's this there's this there's this whole um narrative behind hey, okay this is made from you I, um clipper does a, a a journal right that's made from coffee grinds if i if i if i recall yeah i and, have it right here okay there is maybe got, i can and, show it and so, so if I'm a distributor going to an end client who's looking for, I, I have this whole story to tell about, about the process that went into making this, how it's, how it, how it actually has an aroma of, um, of coffee to, uh, to the cover and everything, how the pages are made from, um, I don't want to misspeak. Is it, it it's recycled, it's recycled. The yeah, pages it's are re recycled paper. So yeah, it's just a cover paper. that is actually yeah. made from, uh, so this, this part is made from coffee waste material. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we put the band, uh, band roll on it. And also the first page is printed with, uh, with an explanation of actually how it's made. Um, so it's in reverse now, but you can see that it's made from a cup of coffee. And uh, you know, we try to explain for all our items um, how it's made, from what it's made, and, and what the impact would be. Like uh, when, you, when you compare it to a non-green item. And we also offer it with like printed packaging in like of course recycled cardboard with a, mm -hmm. with a story behind it because that's really important to just convey the story behind each of the items otherwise they're just going to think it's it's just a regular um yeah funny notebook that smells like coffee but right, i don't know right, what it's right, made right. from because so you really want to convey the message yeah so that's that that's so important and then it gives it gives those end clients um those recipients those people who are putting their branding on on something uh on a product i should say uh, that gives them a story to then go to market with and, and tell. And that that helps build their brand and associates them with positive things like, hey, we're being eco-conscious. We're, tr we're trying to be better to the planet in, in, in how we market ourselves. So it's it becomes a win all around when you when you bring that story um, element into it. So um, yeah. my next question, we kind of jumped into a little bit already, but I'll, I'll just ask it anyway. Um, not just talking about Clipper here, just talking about suppliers broadly in Europe and then also distributors. What are suppliers and distributors in Europe doing to meet the demand for sustainable products? Maybe you could kind of tell us just how things have evolved there over the last few years and just developments you've seen in the marketplace when it comes to sustainability, both in products and then also in, in operations as well. Yeah. Well, um, as you know, the transportation costs plus the CO2 footprint when purchasing items in the Far East and getting them over, especially for bulky items and uh, very large volume items, it's just it's it's get, gets very very expensive. Plus, your CO two footprint is just massive when you produce somewhere else and you want to um, yeah import it uh, thousands of kilometers away. So we try to focus on uh, local production. So we've really moved. Uh, we've sourced local producers that are now um, yeah producing items for us in Europe. 
So which is much better, of course, for cost effective. And also uh, you can have more quality control. Plus we are a little bit more um, advanced in Europe when it comes to um, yeah, these sustainable items. Mm -hmm. Plus, of course, you don't have the CO2 footprint when you when you get it over from uh, by boat or by airplane, which is even worse from the Far East. OK, can so, you give, can you give us an example? I, I remember we were, we were talking at the show and um, you showed me, I think it was a, like a like a leather. It was a leather uh, case, leather portfolio. You might have that available as well. There was a cool product. Like I think it was made from like Apple bits, right? Like Apple. Yeah, I do have it here. This is one of my 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 personal favorites. It's actually oh. um, like a it's a. This one is a toiletry bag or you can put your cables in it. It's made from apples. So it's actually mm -hmm. made from, this is one of the, well, it kind of overlaps. It's a waste stream. Plus it is a, it is a natural product, of course, apples. Mm -hmm. um, we do not use the apple itself, but just the, the, the waste of it. So it's the, the core of it. It's the little stem. Um, it's the material comes from Italy mm -hmm. and they, what they do is they crush it and they bind it by potato starch material. So even the binding agent is made, mm -hmm. is a bio-based material. Mm -hmm. So this this really like um, uh, this allows this really feels like leather. You felt it yourself, of course, in uh, yeah. when we were in England. Mm -hmm. But um, so the it's, the quality is great. Um, it's produced in in uh, the material comes from Italy, and we produce it in the Netherlands. So they can sew all kinds of items from it: large laptop cases, but also smaller items. We do, for instance, uh, notebooks from it. We do um, keychains. Mm -hmm. uh, you name it, we can uh, we can make it from this material. And since you produce it in the, in Europe, it's yeah the quality is is of very high standards. Plus, you 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 have a short um, yeah you can talk to the factory and say can you can you maybe make a little bit like a different zipper on it? Can you mm -hmm. can you make it a little bit different to meet the demands of the clients? And that's not a problem, of course. So that's so that product in particular to me really encapsulates. I think where so many things are, are are going within our industry and even in, in even in consumer products at retail level when it comes to sustainability. So what you told us is we have um we have a bio a, 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 a not biohazard but bio bio <laughs> material in um in, in in apple cores that we're using right. So that's that's a good yeah. thing. Um, we're not using any chemicals there. We then have it. The binding agent is is a is a natural product because it's it's potato starch. Yeah. You're you're based in Netherlands. Um, the, the this is being uh, the apple court the waste is being sourced from italy which isn't around the corner but it's not that far you're not going to you're not going to china for it so you're reducing carbon carbon footprint and then yeah. you're actually making everything right there in the netherlands which is your primary market where, where where you're selling so that's another huge reduction in 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 in, in carbon footprint so you have that yeah. marriage of, of 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 materials sourcing and then local production that kind of all comes together to make what we might define as like a truly sustainable product, right? Yeah, correct. And um, we have a lot of items that actually touch base on so many different levels. We have a social responsibility as well. Therefore, we work together with the Plastic Bank. I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, this corporation. Oh, you um, can tell us about it if you like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so this is a corporation that is, in, uh, that is based in Indonesia and Philippines and also in uh, Haiti, I believe. Mm -hmm. So they have these plastic banks there that they, they pay the, the local impoverished community to actually hand over um, uh, plastic waste that they get from the, from the rivers before it enters the ocean. Mm -hmm. What they do is they, they get a monetary value for each kilogram that they, that they bring to the plastic bank. The plastic bank washes this material, they, they shred it into very small granules. And we have a partnership with the plastic bank so we can purchase this material. So we got a, a large container of this material, got it sent over to Europe. Mm -hmm. And we use this to create all kinds of different uh, nice items, such as a, a Frisbee, some sunglasses, uh, ice scraper. Like the, the possibilities are endless. So you have this social element where you pay impoverished uh, the people in impoverished countries so they can have uh, food on the table they can put their their children to school mm -hmm. um you actually have a nice story to tell for the for the for the products that you're going to sell and you main thing you reduce ocean plastic waste but before Great. it enters the ocean even so you take it out of the rivers before it enters the ocean mm -hmm. those are all great points and and i and that that's a a very important tie and i think you made and we should emphasize it that um that sustainability doesn't exist in a vacuum right like it's it's often done in conjunction with and many people consider it part and parcel with what we might call corporate social responsibility like that like doing good into the world and making sure you're 
supporting uh, you know people around the globe and people who who products you create or areas from which you source might might be affected by so those, that's yeah. a very important important element too um yeah. we should keep me, in mind that uh that these these the people that live in Asia and, and Indonesia and uh and in the Philippines they they either have to choose they they they're gonna pick they they are it's an eyesore as well to have these plastic bottles in their rivers that they, they don't like it but they need to choose. Are they going to make money, uh, the work for a boss, or are they going to clean up the the, the rivers? Mm -hmm. So now they can actually combine it, and they can actually make money by cleaning up the river. So it, it really works very well. All right, br 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 brilliant there, and a, and a great another great example of, of responsible sourcing and how you could work these factors into your into your supply chain. And just, still make really cool products and still make money. So it's, uh, it's, it's a win for everybody. So, um, speaking of that cool products, um, you, you had alluded to, um, Clippers, um, wow collection before, which, which really kind of focuses on sustainable items. Can you tell us a little bit about how that collection came about and you've already given some cool examples from it, but if you want to talk just uh, other things, just products, just, just kind of the story yeah. of the collection. I have some very cool, uh, cool, nice products here that I can show uh, briefly, but maybe first I can give a small introduction of how uh, Clipper came about the, the WOW sustainable range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just the beginning of this year, uh, actually uh, Interall Group, which was a, a relatively small company based in the, in the city of Amsterdam, Mm -hmm. um, was purchased by by Clipper Gift, so they now joined forces, and uh, in that way they make it made a giant leap when it comes to sustainability. The, the Wow Collection was actually part of uh, of the Intero Group. Um, they've been doing it for about four to five years, and uh, I was part of Intero Group, and now we obviously to work together and uh, we we move as one. Um, but because we were a relatively small company, we had the flexibility to move fast with uh, with different ideas that others maybe were a little bit too big and too, um, yeah, they couldn't get it through. So that's why we have a, an assortment that really is is different than from, from others. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just as an example, we have this wine cooler. This is actually a, a wine cooler. This is made from uh, fungus. So it's actually made from, uh, from fungus made from mushrooms. All right. Uh, yeah that's pretty wild yeah so that sort of stuff we, we and also one that we used to do but we have a little bit of problems now with the supplier which means uh which was an, a notebook made from elephant poop is that like right actual elephant dung yeah so it's yeah, uh, we're talking about stories behind a product that is a story behind a product. that is a story behind a product so it really yeah. uh hits base with a lot of uh, of different elements you can use all kinds of stuff we have done uh, the espresso notebook that this notebook that I uh, that I just showed you, we have done uh, actually uh, in cooperation with a distributor here in Europe. We have collected the waste from Nespresso. Uh, they send us the waste, so it's actually not the coffee beans; it's the waste that you get from when you finish the when you make a coffee cup. So it's uh, the the wet stuff that's in your filter. We collected it, so we actually pallets of it. So uh, six or seven pallets get sent to our to our um, production site. They dry it, make compound out of it. And they make these nice, nice notebooks out of it, and then we sell it back to Nespresso on the um, through the distributor, of course, mm -hmm. and they can hand it to their customers or sell it in the shops and saying this is actually made from our own waste, which really uh, it works so well because you really want to full circle, right? Full the whole circle. circle. That's the yeah. whole thing. We want to create a circular economy, mm -hmm. um, and also it it really gives an extra uh, value to the product. Mm -hmm. The people think it's so cool. We've also done, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the airline KLM. We, okay. we have actually uh, got their uniforms. We shredded them and we made notebooks out of them and we, we sold it back. And then like the, the possibilities are endless. So we can also so make... Back to KLM is, the, is like the, the Dutch Air, national Dutch airline. airline. Yeah, I think yeah. they're together with Air France as well now. Yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah, they're, they're very big, at least in Europe. Um, so they, these kinds of things, they're, they're just be great if you can make your own waste stream um yeah it just really hits base with uh with what we are trying to do here and also the, the actually the message that these companies want to tell so they want to say we are thinking about the environment we are really uh, concerned about we have the, all this uh this waste standing in our warehouse we don't know what to do with it could you help can we make something uh can we make something cool out of it and yes we can yeah, yeah, and yes, you can, and that's and that's such a cool opportunity for um, 
for some for suppliers manufacturers who if you're taking this perspective and this approach of you know how can we get creative about using waste materials you suddenly open up all kinds of marketplace opportunities for, yeah. for yourself and um and 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 that's going to make you so much more attractive to obviously end clients but distributors who are lo who are looking for something unique that they can pitch like hey i'm a distributor yeah. and i'm saying i can i i I'm, i have a partner who can take your uniforms your old uniforms and completely repurpose them into different products that we could then brand for you that i mean how do you not love that as as the end buyer right yeah so this is also i think it's great to, to work in such a company that really has products like i i don't I want to have a passion for what I do, of course, like all salespeople obviously do. And if it's just like, oh, we have this bottle, it's we have it in red and we have it in black and, and that's about it. And is this cheap? It doesn't really ring a bell. But when you can say the whole story and say you want to create a circular economy and really make the world a better place, especially, especially the promotional industry mm -hmm. is always based upon cheap, cheaply produced items. You want to give 5,000 items of, of, of 10 cents or 50 cents instead of uh, 1,000 items of one euro mm -hmm. or one, one USD in this case. So um, yeah, it really helps the sales pitch as well. And it really, you see the, the people have a passion for it. So when you, when you do these pitches, you really see it resonates with people. Okay. All right. Now you, you mentioned doing uh, pitches, obviously part of that, um, you know, we, you have to have, you're marketing these products and um, a thing that comes up and it's, it's a reality is, is, is greenwashing, right? Um, where, where people use buzzwords associated with sustainability, but their but their products or their operations, it doesn't really apply to them. So how can suppliers like Clipper and others, you know, prove that their products really are meeting uh, parameters that that make them sustainable? And, um, and yeah, and what kind of, I guess, uh, proof are distributors and end clients asking for in that regard? Yeah, that's a that's a big thing. Since uh, yeah, greenwashing is obviously a, a big problem, mm -hmm. uh, that's why we have a large compliance uh, team that works on compliance documents. We we never launch an item before it, it went through compliance and all the parameters are set, and we have all the documentations in order. We have all kinds of testing facilities that we send these items to, um, like SGS. We have all Intertech. We have all these uh, different. Um, yeah, rules that we have to follow before mm -hmm. we can say this item is uh, bio-based or this item contains, we can never say like, this item contains 90% uh, RPT without even testing it. So we need to have proof of it. And it's done by an external office. So it's uh, it's it's obviously not done by us like a, a butcher grading his own meat. Right, no, sure. We, yeah, so we, we actually um, do it. We have to, like, I don't know how it is in the US, but, but you, you are obliged to uh, to hand over these documents. Okay. You, you can actually not market an item uh, if you're it's false false advertisement. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I, so and that and that ha having to meet that then gives of course peace of mind to your distributors or more than it not only you know legally protects them as they pitch these things to their price they they are also assured that hey I really am working with a supplier who's above board and who is producing items in accordance with, you know, true sustainability standards. So having that to have, what kind of investment is, is involved in that? I mean, is it, is it, I mean, is it substantial? It is substantial. Well, it, it actually depends per item. Some items are, are quite easy to get through compliance. Like we also have a, like a, a bamboo cup, which is just bamboo. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's a 100% bamboo. Um, some other items are a little bit more difficult, such as uh, the, like the, the chargers, the electronic parts, or mm -hmm. toys, for instance, that you, you need to do some toy testing, intertech testing. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends on the item, but it, there's a large, large uh, investment to it. But we're happy to do it, of course, to really prove, um, yeah, what we are saying is actually correct. Plus, okay. there is the, we work with these uh, distributors that actually have very large clients, like the, the biggest ones on the planet, the, okay. the Googles and the, the Shells, okay. everything. Yeah. And, um, uh, they actually do not do business with with if you don't have these compliance documents. They actually say we need to have it in advance. Otherwise, don't even bother give us a give us an offer because it just we're not no, interested. We're not interested. You need to be be above board with all the standards and what you promise needs to be correct. All right, um, and I think I think the big a big takeaway too for distributors who might be listening to this, whether whether in Europe or in um, North America, is if you have a a client who who is looking for quote unquote sustainable items. And you're you're sourcing an array of products for them, and it might be from different suppliers. Before you actually present those 
as quote sustainable items talk to the supplier and get the documentation that shows that because it should be on file to some degree there should be something there that shows hey this is how we source this this is why we can make this claim that you know this item is quote eco or such for 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 these reasons so ask for that documentation because Definitely. There, are, there are unscrupulous players in the market like every, every market has them ours is not immune and <laughs> you want to make sure you're really working with the real deal you know, for us, it's 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 very very easy. When you visit www.clippergifts.com, there's actually you can see all our items, and you can actually download the the compliance document straight away from the product page. Mm -hmm. So that you can actually, uh, yeah, it makes it simple. You don't even have to ask it. You just click the button, and you will see all necessary compliance documents for the for this item. Very very forward thinking there, making it easy for your customers to do that. So, um, kind of we're kind of getting toward the end here, Nick. I just I want to do um ask you this kind of a kind of pull back the lens if you will look more broadly um how do you see sustainability impacting operations and product development in promo say over the next few years do you, do you think the influence will grow and and what might that look like oh well, i definitely think the uh, the influence will grow like uh, we are definitely the 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 emphasis is going to be on sustainability and not the price is going to be less of an uh, of an impact mm -hmm. so that like the suppliers the, the distributors they are going to source sustainable items and like i said uh, the story behind it is going to sell it so if the story is correct uh, the budget will grow with it like we said uh, how, how cool is it if you can make an item from your own waste yeah. and then if it's like 50 cents more expensive uh, so be it because you really want to convey the message and also in the upcoming years like i said the compliance documents need to be in order in the, maybe some smaller companies can get away with selling green items uh, that are not green but mm -hmm. in two years time i don't think it's going to be possible anymore because you need to have this testing done so even the smaller players in the in the industry they're going to have a little bit more difficulties because they might not want to be able to do these investments for internet for these testings for older items mm -hmm. so uh, i believe that it's gonna um it's gonna be a lot more focused on sustainability plus the story behind it mm -hmm. All right, interesting. Um, just uh, you, you kind of said it well there, but just any kind of final thoughts for anybody on either Clipper, sustainability, what's going on in, in, in Europe, Any anything you want to leave us with? Um, well, I'm going to say that, um, well, I'm going to be the, the inside account manager for the rest of the world region. So please feel free to, to contact me with any um, questions or, uh, or uh, like offer requests you might have. You can uh, contact me at uh, clippergifts.com um yeah sales at clippergifts.com and um yeah please visit our website you will see that there's a lot of out of the box items um that might resonate with you and we uh if you need more information feel free to contact us and the whole idea is to obviously make the the the, the, the industry as a whole a little bit more sustainable and in the end a lot more sustainable of course but i know that it's going to go in small steps it's not going to be one giant leap so uh we're working on it um, but we have to do it together. So distributors, the end consumers, suppliers, also the large factories. We all need to work together to uh, to just reduce our footprint and make it a better world. Yeah. I think I think it's a great final thought. And I would just say that, um, you know, distributors in, in North America, I do see what's happening in Europe um, be, ha starting to play out on a larger scale in North America, too. So if you can start identifying suppliers that already have a significant head start, in um you know I, I, on the sustainability front and have those products and have documentation i'd start looking to partner more closely with them now because i i do think that it, as nick said it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to be the biggest thing but it is a growing thing in our industry and it's going to become more and more prominent and i think more and more significant particularly as younger generations move into decision making roles in the business world so nick thank you so much for um for being with us today super appreciate it i know it's later over there than it is here so thanks no for problem. making some time after work to chat with us appreciate it so much thanks a lot chris have a nice day oh, you too